What's going on everybody? In this episode, we are going to talk about lazy caching inside of Next.js and we're going to talk about revalidate. So this is kind of part three of our miniature get static paths mini series inside of our Next.js mini series inside of our React not mini series. So hopefully you've been following along and understanding everything so far. The previous two episodes, we introduced get static paths and we introduced what happens if the data is not found. The conclusion we came to is that when fallback is true, it will at runtime request that data from the database. And if it's not found, it will return true for the not found property. And then we can condition in our display to show that customer. Some interesting challenges pop up if for this get static paths, we say I have 100,000 customers or millions of customers. It's not really reasonable to get the ID for every single customer and statically generate every single page. Well, knowing that if fallback is true, it'll request that data from the database and then that data will be cached, we could just pre-cache zero customers instead, or just cache the most popular customers if you have a way to get that information from the database. So if you take a look at the site, and let's say we add a customer, and we will call this test, and we'll check the ID here. We can see that this is ID 25. When we access data for 25, it says loading briefly, and then it says customer test. And this is a cache miss. So it took a little bit longer for that page to load initially. However, every other request is now going to hit that cache. You can see it says X Next.js cache is a hit. So from now on, we're getting served the cache version and it's very fast. So if in our get static paths, instead of doing all this junk, I will comment this out. And for paths, I will just give an empty array. This is called lazy caching because no data is going to be cached for this parameterized page until it is requested for the first time. So let's try that out by closing out of the server and npm run build and npm run start. So we're well aware of what customers were originally cached by visiting our all customers page. But even when I visit customer one, it'll say loading briefly and we will get a cache miss. But now going forward, we will get a cache hit. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't pass in all the IDs. I'm just saying that this is another option. If you want to not pre-cache anything on build time, then you could just have it so that it paths is an empty array. Now I want to show you one other thing and that is if we pass in another ID that we haven't viewed yet, we see the loading and then we get the customer Sal Brown. And if we view the page source, there is no mention of Sal Brown here because the data was retrieved after the page load. So instead we have loading dot dot dot. So if we don't cache any information, how's this going to affect SEO? Because now all of our pages on initial load are just going to have loading inside of the source code. While the documentation elaborates on this situation, the paths that have not been generated at build time will not result in a 404 page. Instead, Next.js will serve a fallback version of the page on the first request to such a path. That would be the initial loading page that's then replaced with the content. Web crawlers such as Google won't be served a fallback and instead the path will behave as in fallback blocking. So there's actually a different value that can be provided to fallback called blocking. And this is the default behavior for web crawlers such as Google. So Google is not actually going to see the loading in the HTML. Instead, it's going to get what would be seen if we used fallback blocking. In this situation, it's identical to server side rendering in which it will wait for the HTML to be generated. In this situation, the HTML is pre-built before sending it to the client and there is no flash of loading or a fallback state. So if you wanted to see that in action, what we can do is we can set fallback not to true, but instead to blocking. Testing this out, let's go ahead and rebuild our application. npm run build. npm run start. Now we will visit a new customer and we can see that this was in fact a cache miss. However, if we view the page source, we can see that person's name in the HTML. So this is what the web crawler would receive 
when we are using fallback set to true. You can, of course, also use blocking yourself, but there's not a lot of benefit to using blocking over the true value, as it's just going to slow the time to first byte. The only potential benefit is you're not going to see that flash of the loading text. So when we visit a new customer, which I need to check our IDs here. Let's go to this one in 22. If we go to 22, you'll notice that there is no flash of loading. We just get that data immediately. So if you're looking for a visual benefit, then you can use fallback being blocking. I personally prefer using true, but you might see blocking out there in the wild. Now the next question, if we retrieve data from the database and it's cached, but then that data is updated, how does Next.js know to update that data? Well, this is called incremental static regeneration, and we talked about it briefly in a previous episode. This was before we used parameterized pages, but it's going to be very similar. What that means is we can invalidate the cache every so often by adding a property to the get static props return, and that is going to be revalidate with some period of time in seconds, such as 60 seconds. And we will do the same thing down here. So I'll add a property to this return, and that will be revalidate being 60. So now we have all of the behavior that we would expect with fallback rendering 404 pages, but it will, in the background, check for new data on new requests after that time period has elapsed. So let's check this out. Let's go ahead and rebuild our application and then npm run start. And we will make a new customer in our database, the newest, and save. This is going to have the ID 26. So on our front end, when we request 26, it loaded for just a second and then it says customer the newest. If we then went and changed this to the newest customer and saved this data, when we visit that page, it's going to keep the outdated data. This is cached and that's what we will continue to get until this 60 seconds has elapsed and we make a new request. So taking a look at our request here, it was a cache hit, meaning it's using the file from the cache. Now I'm going to wait a few moments and then we will make a new request. All right, it has been a few moments longer than that 60 seconds, so our next request should get the new data. Now the important thing to note is that it has been longer than a minute but that cache is not going to be invalidated until another request. So it's been like three minutes, for example. We check this and it's stale. This triggers a new retrieval and a new cached file, making the next request the updated data. Similar concept, if we take an ID that doesn't yet exist, such as 27, we're going to get a 404. But if we go and add a customer that happens to have that ID, customer with ID 27, hopefully, test and we'll save and we'll check just to make sure this does in fact have 27. After a minute we'll be able to make a request and we will get a stale cache hit so it'll still show up as a 404 and then the next request is going to be the actual data. So the cache isn't actually replaced until we get a stale request which is a request that's been after the 60 seconds. This prevents constantly refreshing files that haven't been requested in ages. So let's go ahead and do a refresh and you can see this is now stale. So the next should show that customer data and it does. Now notice this was a cache hit, so we did not get the loading pop up briefly. Now in the documentation under data fetching, there is more on incremental static regeneration. And there's a section in here on on-demand revalidation. We haven't talked about this yet, but this will allow you to force a refresh for particular pages. So you can read through this and maybe that is something we will cover here soon. But for now, we are using the default behavior, which may occasionally cause someone to get a stale page, but if that revalidate is going frequently enough, it's probably not that big of a deal. With the forced revalidation, you could cause a cache refresh on demand whenever some data is changed. This will ensure people are getting the most up-to-date data and it's all being served from static files. Hopefully this video has been a good introduction to some of the other options with the fallback and revalidate. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. I'm looking forward to it and be sure to subscribe.